Let's okay. get one of these, buy a quarter inch wide blade for it so you can cut contours and it'll change your life. And it's old, this thing is probably... I mean, it looks like it's straight out of a freaking mining factory or something. It could be from like, or something. you know, from, it could be 70 years old for all I know. Dang, I know that's sick. How did you even begin to learn? Just by doing it and by doing it wrong. <laughs> and, right. Uh, and that was like my first weld that I ever did. Look at how good it looks. Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> I think the biggest thing I would like to put across to people is that like you don't need the most expensive equipment. You don't need the $4,000 feed yeah. roller. Yeah, it's nice, but you can do the same thing with that. Hey guys, so Danny Giannini shop tour. You guys ready? There's a lot of stuff here. Let's show you guys what we got. So first of all, we got Craig's truck out here. We went over that. If you guys haven't seen the episode on that, Craig's truck is amazing. Craig, we love your truck. Thank you. It's amazing. So Danny, tell us about the shop though, before uh, we even start. This is... Did you build this place? I did. My father-in-law and I put it up. I had some friends, a buddy of mine's contractor did the, did the concrete for me. Okay. Another buddy do all the electrical for me. And, but the actual building itself, yeah, we, we put up. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible, dude. Yeah, it saved a lot of money. Heck yeah. It that way. Heck yeah, dude. That's um, awesome. This, it does. This is a legit shop. It's, you know, I get to work, Close. to work in my yard. There it is. You know, I don't have to drive anymore, thankfully. Which yeah. is nice. So right now it's just you and Craig kind of handling everything, it's huh? It's me and Craig. It's been that way for almost Coming? five years. Five years, Craig? Right. And, and you're still dealing with Danny's meanness. Putting up with him. Still Dude, every day just putting up with him, huh? Yeah. He's yeah. a good guy. Dude, that's funny. Danny is the nicest guy in the world, by the way. Try that's totally a joke. Tell us really quick before we get started. I know you, you started fabricating originally at, uh, with Kurt LeDuc, I which is like out here in, in Cherry Valley, right? Yeah, he's like two blocks from here. Okay. But that just was coincidence. I started doing fabrication when I was, let's put it this way, before I was like 18, I didn't even know that off-road racing, any of this existed. You're a moto kid. As a kid, even all the way up into my mid-20s, all I did was ride and race dirt bikes. Okay. But then started getting into the truck stuff. A good friend of mine, Robbie, he was the first one to show me like a pre-runner. Okay. And we went to an off-road race, went to an MDR race. I watched an MDR race and it just blew me away. I was like, I'm doing this. Um, I didn't have a vehicle to take to drive, but you're, I would you're go. You're a fan, dude. Me and my buddies would go and watch, you know? Like, yeah. I was just fanatic about this stuff. I was working a construction job, a great job. I would probably still be there if it hadn't been for the economy taking a crap. Right. That job allowed me to have some money to start buying tools. I couldn't afford to pay anyone, but I was I wanted to try to build something. Okay. So, and it started with like literally my first tool. This is probably a lot for a lot of like 1400 guys, like really garage fab guys. Like first tool you buy is like a Harbor Freight tube bender, which is like the biggest piece of crap ever, but <laughs> like it bends tube. It works. So I bought that. I got a used Sawzall from my uh, construction company that I was working for, which was actually my father-in-law's business. Okay. Those are my first tools. Damn. And angle grinder, a Black & Decker from Home Depot. Amazing. And you just started, just kind of, you just dove into it? I mean, how did you even begin to learn? Just by doing it and by doing it wrong. <laughs> and, right. Uh, there's another local guy in town, his name's Woody. He was the only one I knew in town who was into it and was doing fabrication and was good at it. Okay. So, like, once I met him, I was just like, he was my go to. Like, if I had questions, I'm going to Woody's house and I'm going to yeah, figure pick it out. up some information mm -hmm. and, and try to soak it up, you know? So okay. he was super helpful. He actually helped me buy my first TIG welder. Like, he put me in connection with a guy who was selling one. That's and it wild. was just a hobby. I started building a 1400 truck. It took a couple of years to build, raced it a few times. Like, stuff would fall off of it. Yeah. <laughs> Parts would fall off yeah. of it. Wheels would fall off, you know? Like, just the progression of learning, like, oh, well, this don't work. It was the this journey, dude. Work. It was... Yeah. It was so bad. Like, it would barely turn. And they had this section at Glen Helen where, like, you went up, it's partially up Mount St. Helens, and then you would turn around, like, and do a 180-degree turn and come back down. Oh, shoot. And, like, I went up, and the thing would not turn. Oh, my And I was, like, I didn't know how to drive. Like, I didn't know how to, like, pivot the truck. Yeah, yeah. To get it to come back down. So I, like, drove up and, like, ran into the wall <laughs> and was just, like, stuck there. And then I didn't know what to do. So I was, like, just, like, juiced it. 
and then back down the hill. No, dude. And like, how sketchy was that? It was it was sketchy because I couldn't see where I was going, but it was like just embarrassing. Like, dude, you're on the side of the hill. Like everybody's seen you pull this total bonehead move. Like, Damn. idiot. I completely cut the front of the truck off again and like rebuilt it. Yeah. Put better layout, like better functioning arms on it, and actual yeah. steering rack. And, and it was a seat. It was a C10. It was. You just like snowballed hard from being a fan as a kid, buying shitty tools at first. Not knowing what you're doing, just try and hitting up the local guy from Cherry Valley to guide you. Yeah. And then just building from there and yeah. just diving in, working with Kurt LaDuke. That and then, was later. That was later. That was later. That was. Um, That's insane. After the construction stuff kind of died, I was like looking for a job. Yeah. And my neighbor, friend of a friend, basically, his son was working there. And they're like, oh, hey, they're looking for a fabricator. Okay. So I went over there and uh, I was like, yeah, you know, start That's you tomorrow. Insane. And, uh, and so I started working there, and I learned so much there. That's insane, like, dude. That's sick, man. You can take like everything I learned over like the six years, seven years I was doing this on my own, mm -hmm. and then like the short time I was there, a couple of years off and on, like all the knowledge, everything. It was fabrication school in a sense. It was right. I mean, Kurt taught Troy Johnson, basically. Yeah. That's my understanding. Right. Like Troy used to work for Kurt. Right. And Troy owns a fab school yeah so like that's how far back this goes like, that's insane dude the dude he he's like a uh, encyclopedia of fabrication and off-road knowledge like, yeah and, and 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 pioneer in a lot of senses too with like the technology and everything they did because i mean like they, they, they were some of the first groups of guys to go so damn fast mm -hmm. in in like the trophy trucks well, in the desert days, and win. like i mean they were at the birth of trophy trucks insane dude the yeah. wild the wild man dude yeah he's got a notion he's found another line He's off through the rough stuff. This is where the gotchas live. But he straightens out the corner and makes the pass. Nice move by McCaffrey. Danny, with that awesome intro, I think you got to take us through your, your shop and kind of quickly tell us about these vehicles. And um, we plan on meeting up with Danny maybe in a few weeks to go over more detail about them. So don't worry, more info is going to be coming. A lot of trucks have been built here. A lot of trucks have been worked on here. And my truck was worked on here too for a little bit. Danny helped me out with that too. Yeah. So let's 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 hit it, dude. You want to yeah. take us through real quick like your tools? Yeah. So we have um, what I would consider very uh, basic tools. Right. There's nothing here extravagant, nothing here very expensive. Probably the most expensive single tool I have would be the plasma table. Okay. And it's probably the least used tool in my shop. Okay. It does get, it does get used, but really not at all for this stuff. Okay. It's, I use it more for like a commercial based stuff. So aside from off-road stuff, you do commercial? I do. Right. I do. I don't really ever post any of that stuff because, I mean, it's... Yeah. It's just... But it works and it pays the bills it too, man. It pays the bills and it's... Hell yeah. And I honestly really, en I do enjoy it. Right. Um, it's just, it just kind of breaks it up. Yeah. So there's a plasma table. Plasma table. Of one one horizontal bandsaw. It's it's a three phase, so I have to use a phase converter. I actually bought that phase converter in the corner from Michael Cox like years ago. Okay. Yeah. And right so on. Mike can know it's still working. Still kicks butt. There it is. Down there on the ground. Um, I hate chop saws. I will not use a chop saw. Okay. So we cut everything with this. Okay. Yeah. Plasma table. You didn't have this here last time I was here, I don't think. Oh, it's been here. Mm -hmm. I've had that thing since like 2012. Maybe it just had a bunch of stuff on top of yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it never gets used. Literally. Most importantly, we got the 80 up there somewhere. That was my first real dirt bike. Not that that matters to anybody, but. Oh, it does. That was my baby. Yeah. My parents controlled my life with that thing. Yeah. If you, I could you, not keep my grades up, I couldn't ride that. And that was, in, that was my world. Dude, that was my family too, except that I wasn't was cool. I didn't have a two stroke. I had a freaking quad. <laughs> Me. Yeah, I know. I got. I was the guy who was getting made fun of and roosted by Danny and his friends in the hills. <laughs> um, we went over this truck real quick, guys. You guys, if you guys didn't see it, go back to the one of the previous episodes because that's probably the following. Yeah. Industrial stuff. That yeah. stuff. That's not. That's just a little uh, personal project. Okay. That's, that's for me and Austin. Okay. Uh, right on. Austin. Stomp shear. This is actually not even mine. I borrowed it from Nick, a buddy of mine. Very very useful tool. Okay. Again, they're not, you can go buy a new one and they're really not that expensive. Okay. I just happened to get this one out of storage from a friend and I've been using it ever since. Hell yeah. Yeah. And it's old. This thing is probably. I mean, it looks like it's straight out of a freaking mining factory or something. It could be from like, you know, from, it could be 70 years old for all I know. Dang, I don't know that's sick. Dude. Yeah. You don't need very, very expensive equipment to do this work. You just need to know how to do it. Right. 
So for me, learning doing this with minimal stuff. And that's just how I do everything. That's how, that's how it works. Yeah. Um, this is an eight foot, just a standard break. Um, we use that quite often. We got a corner notcher here, uh, another sheet metal tool, but I actually broke it, so I have to repair it. Hmm. Uh, this is a Harbor Freight three in one. This is really old. All I really use it for is a roller, so it's a slip roll on top. So you can actually form cones mm. and, uh, and just and form radiuses and, and flat sheet. Right on. The rest of it really doesn't need gold press and our own rusty, I think Craig built this, uh, press brake. It's like an 18 inch capacity. Just throw that up in the brake if you need to break some heavier gauge sheet metal. Right on. Um, this is a really cool tool. It's an iron worker. You can punch material, you can shear material, shear angle iron, you can nibble stuff with it. It's an awesome tool for like the commercial end of it. Really doesn't get used too often on the truck stuff because we go for a little bit more precise Okay. when we're, when we're uh, doing truck stuff. Okay. File cabinets full of templates. Templates. That's we got crazy. templates for days. Um, that's just a little bit. I mean, two, look at these template piles. So everything. Like this right here, that's the front of my truck. That's the front of the pre-runner. <laughs> that right is there. incredible, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes. I call this old school because yeah. literally this is this is 80s. Yeah. This is fabrication in the 80s right here. Yep. I don't yeah. use and it works. any solid works or anything like that because I just personally, I don't know how to do it. Right, so right. So it's easier for me to make a template transfer it to a die cam sheet of chromoly and then cut it on the bandsaw and form it from there. It's incredible. It works for me. A little bolt supply. Right. This is one of my favorite tools, the oxy settling torch. Uh, we use it for everything from cutting stuff apart, like demo work, to preheating parts, to, I mean, anyone, this is like a very common, I mean, a lot of guys just have these in their garage. Okay. But uh, you can't not have it. There's a box and pan break there. That's another borrowed tool. Belongs to Nick. So I got the shear and the and this break from my buddy Nick. They were in storage. And he's like, you just take them and use them. Hell yeah. So this gets used quite often. Um, the lathe, you can tell because it's dirty. Another like must-have tool. And it's actually a Harbor Freight. I don't even know if you can buy these anymore, but it's the same as like a Jet or any of the other Chinese brands. That's wild. But um, absolute must-have. Hell yeah. You have to have one. Um, from everything from like just facing off parts to you know you gotta undersize something, you gotta bore something out, lay it as does the job. Absolutely. Hell yeah. But it's a simple tool. It's not they can they can you can pick up a used one, a good used one for you know fifteen hundred bucks, two grand. Nice. They're not that expensive. And it does so much. It does. Necessary. And um, the old JD squared bender. This was like the first real tool that I ever bought, but it was like, the, it didn't have the air over hydraulic. It was just like, you just bend it, pull it. Yeah. Had the ratchet. Yeah. So I've had that in all these dies for shoot, probably 18 years now. Dang. I've had them forever. I've even made incredible. a few dies for square tube. Bandsaw, absolute must have tool. Must have. Must have. If you're in your garage and you're cutting stuff with a cutoff wheel, you're, you're hating life. Just okay. get one of these, buy a quarter inch wide blade for it so you can cut contours and it'll change your life. And then, uh, let's see what else. Yeah, let's see. So, uh, vices. I've got a few vices. This is an old reed vise. Arbor press, got some bushings and stuff. A good notcher. It's a Bailey. It's like, you can notch contours and stuff on this. It's a pretty cool piece. The old multi-tool, just built grinder. I've had this for probably four or five years. Um, this was our, until I got the Ameribraid, which is a game changer. This was the only grinder we used. No way. Like Up me, until... Me and Craig would be fighting over this thing. Because you guys are freaking on it so much. Yeah, so now that I have the Marabraid and it has the different attachments, like, I'm going to get another one of these. That's sick, dude. It's amazing. I could do a, I can just talk all day about this thing because it's freaking rad. That's awesome, There's All man. kinds of different attachments. And this is only like, this ain't even a quarter of what they make for it. That's awesome. Yeah. Tons um, of different applications for it. Yep. Uh, air tools, these are a must. I mean, that's what I use, but it's just all you know, drums, discs, and different different carbides, DA sanders and stuff. Hell yeah! And uh, they're not really expensive die grinders, but they work really well. Nice. This just basically gets used for sharpening tungsten. My drill press 
set up. This one's just set up primarily just for eighth inch for piloting holes. Okay. Then we'll use this one for actually drilling holes to size. This one doesn't even work. <laughs> this is just for chamfering holes. So basically, like if you're if you're hand cutting holes, which we hand cut everything. Okay. It just makes it so much faster to come here, drill a hole, come here, drill to size, come here, chamfer it, and you're done. You don't have to switch tooling. You don't have to do anything. It just makes it faster. Nice. That's here. why there's three different drill presses. This is my big Miller 250 MIG welder. It's like- That's 30, the one that does all the magic? 30 years old and it still still works pretty good. No way. Yeah. Right on. It works. And Heck then, yeah. Um, this was my first welder I ever bought. I bought it, and I think I was like 18 or 19. Oh, I'll show you this. I keep this in here, because it's funny. So I bought a new FM50 in 2002 and I wanted to like put some sick exhaust on it. Nice, of course. And I borrowed a welder. And that was like my first weld that I ever did. Look at how good it looks. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> Insane, beautiful. Look at that. This is new, it's about three months old now. Oh dang, it's new a, stuff. Uh, so I have two Everlast. I bought this one and these things rip. Yeah? I love it. It worked really good. So I had a Miller 250DX, which is kind of like the industry standard TIG welder. Okay. Um, but it's a transformer machine and I wanted another inverter because these things are amazing. So is the technology getting better with these things? Yeah. To yeah. where it's just becoming easier to use or longer lasting or how does that work? It's, it's way more energy efficient. Okay. And then it also, um, being an inverter, the AC adjustments are like infinite, which is normally on a transformer machine, the electricity that comes from the wall is 60 hertz. It's going to put 60 hertz out. Hmm. Um, but with this, you can adjust your hertz all the way up to like 750. Damn. From like 25, like infinite adjustability and the balance. And there's, there's a whole, you could do a whole episode just on that. That's awesome, dude. Like these That's things so are cool. amazing. I love them. And they're not very expensive. Nice. Like this one with the cooler, as you see it, I think it was like $2,600. Yeah. 2,800. Yeah. Man, you turn, you could turn that into a business in itself, kids. Buy one of these guys, get trained on how to use it properly. Those start welding like stuff the, for people. Like in the you know what I mean? World start tig start taking stuff for people. Work. Heck yeah. So we have two now, so that Craig and I aren't fighting over it. Here's another super cool sheet metal tool. This is the bead roller. This is the only one I own. Incredible. It's a Harbor Freight. Yeah. Like with a little piece of metal welded on it to stiffen it up. That's awesome. And it works awesome. I think the biggest thing I would like to put across to people is that like you don't need the most expensive equipment. You don't need the four thousand dollar feed yeah. roller. Yeah, it's nice, but you can do the same thing with that. Right. You know, and it won't it won't break you trying to trying to buy it. Right. Especially for young kids. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and then look guys, we got the wall over here. You know, we got his kids' art, which is rad. A bunch of cool stuff. Yeah. I was with Danny this day. This was a lot of fun. That was what else? Clamps. This is just the basic stuff, but it's really all you need. Just a bunch of vice grips, square, straight edges, circle templates. Um, did you say straight edge? No, I'm just kidding. I did. Just kidding. <laughs> We're super straight edge. Look how many we got. <laughs> Scribes, center punches, like. Heck yeah. Scissors. Necessity. For cutting all your paper templates. For all the paper templates, yeah. that's right. Um, it's just all basic stuff. And a furnace from the 1800s. Well, awesome, yeah, man. man. Well, thanks for sharing, guys. Yeah. Thank you, guys, Craig. It's awesome to see all the tools, you know, you guys use to, to make all the, the magic work in here. I guess that just kind of leaves us with a, a quick little tour of, of the vehicles you got in right now. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of tin work. It's all MoTeC inside. Nice. Oh, like it'll be. So this is kind of like the truck you'd kind of want to build. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For the family. Um, so our buddy Justin from Heatwave, the owner of Heatwave, is, is building this thing with Danny. And it's going to be something special. I don't know what the hell it's going to be. It's